You know, what if there is in, in effect, and in fact, sort of what, what we might call a, 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 a media industrial complex, just like we, we use the term uh, um, warfare industrial complex. What if there's a media industrial complex? And what if it really does create sort of an undeserving tech power elite? People who would not have the power and pull they have um, if it wasn't for this melding of corporate and state power. So at what point are what I assume all of us as civil libertarians, at what point are we justified in, in beginning to oppose these powerful tech companies and media companies when they blur the distinction between outright First Amendment violations by, by an expressly government actor and, and then the, the quasi-private silencing of alternative voices like Alex Jones by state-connected actors. I, at some point, there's a little bit of a fine line there. I won't pretend to have the answer, but it's troubling to me. But here, here's the thing. Here's what's so, I think, bewildering to a lot of us um, who have been, haven't necessarily been paying attention, but now we're forced to pay attention, is that how did we get to where we are? And I, I think we got to where we are by stealth, because we haven't really recognized or come to terms with the, the triumph of progressivism in this country over the last hundred years. Uh, if we think about it, progressivism, which is the mantra of tech companies, which is also the mantra of most people in government, is really the dominant force in society. It, is, it, is, it frames every debate we have, whether that's political, cultural, social, economic, we're speaking to each other in terms of, of a progressive framework, and we don't see it because we're so caught up in sort of these outmoded ideas of left and right or liberal conservative. And, and so progressivism and, and its influence around us, it, it becomes like the furniture or a potted plant. We don't notice it anymore, but we live among it. And, and when, when I use the term progressive, for most of us in this room, that probably means left wing. We think, well, that's, that's a person on the left is a progressive. That's not entirely accurate. I think there are right wing progressives as well. Progressive is somebody who thinks humankind is malleable and that it ought to be conformed to serve the state or society or the collective or whatever it serves better. And that are, in other words, humans need to evolve. They need to get better so that we can get on with our grandiose plans which is what progressives are. They're people with grandiose plans. So in that sense, they, they exist on both the left and right. On the, on the left, this generally takes the form of some kind of social, socialist collectivism, social democracy is the buzzword today. On the right, it sometimes takes the form of militarism or uh, national greatness concepts that we're going to go, uh, like George W. Bush, we're going to go instill democracy uh, wherever it's needed, good and hard. Uh, even if that's among uh, 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 centuries-old uh, uh, Taliban mindsets. So what it really gets down to is that the progressives are marked by grandiosity about what government can do, about what government can accomplish. If only these pesky citizens would, would stop pursuing their own ends all the time. They tend to do that. So in every meaningful way, really, progressives of all stripes control politics, they control government, they control business, they control con culture in America and in the West. The, the 20th century was irretrievable, irretrievably progressive. So this is our world today. Uh, it, from my view anyway, progressives overwhelmingly control both major political parties. They control the federal judiciary along with all the federal departments and agencies. Don't think that as you know, Trump changed any of this. 80% of federal employees in the administrative agencies don't come and go with the new administration. They're union members. So you see the tip of the iceberg. What you don't see is all those federal employees. Um, and, and as you might know, for example, uh, there are plenty of people who work for the IRS or the Treasury who just sort of shrug when Congress tries to change the uh, 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 regs on a certain tax bill. They just say, no, we're not going to do that. It, it, you'd, you'd be shocked if you spend any time in Washington, how, the degree to which federal administrative agencies are a government un, unto themselves. Uh, progressives dominate academia, no question. Universities, K through 12 education, government and private, top to bottom, no question. Progressives run the American Medical Association. They run the American Bar Association. And thus these two uh, traditionally conservative professions of, of medicine and law are steered leftward. 
progressives run all supranational agencies and NGOs, things like the UN, the IMF, the World Bank, the EU, almost all charities, foundations, nonprofits in the West. Almost all major corporations, global and domestic, are run by progressives. Their boards are progressives. Their corporate branding and messaging is progressive. If you doubt that, walk into Target sometime. Uh, Wall Street is undeniably progressive, uh, gave overwhelmingly to Hillary over Trump. Uh, Silicon Valley, the tech industry are dominated by progressives, Google, Apple, Microsoft. Uh, but the old media, overwhelmingly controlled by progressives. Broadcast news and print publications still today. Virtually all journalists self-identify as progressive. That's why Alex Jones exists, <laughs> because there was no other way for him to exist. Those outlets were not available to him. Progressives overwhelmingly run the, the social sites like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Progressives undeniably run Hollywood. Pop culture, uh, they hold sway over the film, TV, uh, music, video industries. Uh, they, they control all the big streaming services like <coughs> HBO, Netflix, Hulu, that you consume in the evening. Uh, all religious institutions in the West, from the Vatican to mainline Protestant churches to virtually all synagogues, are thoroughly progressive, both politically and, and in terms of doctrine. So when you put all this together, is there any wonder that progressives won every battle of the 20th century and, and that they're winning the 21st century ones as well? I mean, think about it this way. Think, you know, say around the time of of the late 1800s, turn of the century, Teddy Roosevelt, the, what we think of as the progressive era. Let's say you, the United States in 1900 was at, a, was at five on the progressive scale. And let's say today it's at 100 on the progressive scale. Well, anyone who suggests, well, let's push back from 100 to 98 is now a reactionary right winger by definition. Or, or even somebody suggests, well, let's, let's proceed from 100 to 105 a little slower than you're planning. That's all it takes, folks, to, to be branded a reactionary today. We simply don't fully recognize the world that we live in. So Orwell talked about this. He predicted it. Uh, I mean, he talked about language being used in consciously dishonest ways. And that sort of circles us back to this idea of PC. Our language is being seized by some very illiberal forces in our society, people who are not well-intentioned, even as they tell us that their goal is to create a more just or more equitable world. And if we allow it to go on, it's going to have some drastic consequences. And going, going back to Orwell, he, he was writing this in 1946. He has a great short essay you can find. It's called Politics in the English Language. It's only maybe 1,500 words or something. It's online a couple different spots. Politics in the English Language, so great. I mean, I mean what he distills... In, in that few words is really interesting. But he, he used the term meaningless words to describe political jargon. Uh, and, and it surrounds us today. Words that are abused until they lose all value or meaning, either, either as a description or an epithet today. Uh, so here I'm quoting him. He says, and this is 1946, mind you. The word fascism has now no meaning except insofar as it signifies something not desirable. <laughs> That, that sounds uh, applicable today. And here's another great quote from him. In the case of a word like democracy, not only is there no agreed definition, but the attempt to make one is resisted from all sides. It is almost universally felt that when we call a country democratic, we are praising it. Well, I think that's, that's certainly true uh, today. So as a result, we have our whole set of meaningless words plaguing us today. Uh, words like social justice, bigot, xenophobe, racist, fascist, misogynist, socialist, dreamer, uh, snowflake, liberal, conservative, democracy. These have all become meaningless words. We don't even care to define them or use them precisely. But instead, we use them as bullets. We use them as bullets in the gun in a form of verbal warfare, not as honest descriptions. They're, they're actually used dishonestly, intentionally dishonestly, with, as Orwell will put it, with the intent to deceive. So they're used to further the speaker's or the writer's agenda rather than to create understanding, which is what language is supposed to be all about. Uh, so I'll leave you with this. If there's any group that ought to guard against the misuse of language, it's lawyers. 
Uh, lawyers make their living, their stock and trade in words and in arguments. Uh, they make a living using words to convey specific meanings. Just think about contract language. Think about trusts. Think about wills. Uh, think about parsing a statute. Think about uh, appellate decisions um, and how carefully lawyers parse the language in them, Mo moving a comma around in a document. I bet you've done that. Um, using the word may instead of shall. O often that comes up in statutory language. The, all of these, these little things can have very real consequences. Uh, remember when the Supreme Court decided that the, the fine levied by Obamacare was A-OK -okay because it was a tax instead of a penalty? Well, that was a, that was a case of uh, specious interpretation of words. So if lawyers won't police precision in language and demand better, who will? Thanks very much.